Hey, it's Dr. Karen Can here, and welcome to another edition of the Spiritual Medicine Digest. So I had a very um, interesting Wednesday. <laughs> I was sitting there eating a late lunch. I do some intermittent fasting with bone broth and things like that. So I was eating a late lunch and uh, had some questionable fish, although it didn't taste bad. It just tasted a little old. It had been in the fridge for couple of days, um, you know, soaking in lemon juice. I was making ceviche. I've made it very well in the past, and but I kept forgetting to eat it over the last couple of days. So I thought, well, you know, I'm going to try it. So I had a, a couple of bites of fish, and then um, then went to drink my pre-made smoothie, meaning that I pre-made it earlier in the day. Um, very funny combination. I know, I know. You think I was pregnant or something, but I'm not. Um, anyway, so fish and smoothie. <laughs> So, so after drinking a sip, you know, then I started getting that feeling of nausea and I thought, oh, that's interesting. I haven't had something like this in quite a while. And um, I used to hate, I, I was thinking to the universe, this is like the worst symptom ever to be nauseous because I hated throwing up when I was a kid. But uh, I had, since years ago, kind of come to peace with it. So I was just more in, oh, that's interesting, you know, kind of curiosity <laughs> of nausea. So as my husband lovingly, you know, escorted me to the bathroom and sat me down next to the toilet, um, I was, you know, testing, you know, as the waves of nausea came. And I thought, well, I'm probably going to vomit. And I did. And I thought, well, this is interesting. And of course, the medical mind is like, well, it's not really food poisoning. I mean, hardly got anything in your system, you know what I mean? It's so fast. So not your typical food poisoning. And um, we could be, you know, drinking something cold because sometimes that can hit the stomach, be too cold and cause nausea and vomiting. But, um, you know, it wasn't particularly a cold day or anything like that. And I drink the smoothies every day, so nothing terribly new. So I thought, you know, I'm just going to test. I'm just going to see what's up. So as I'm like in between, you know, wretches, although I only did it like two or three times, um, I was testing. So is this, you know, because of uh, the symptom, because of the fish? So I, here I am in a space of curiosity. So is this because of the fish I ate? No. Is it because of the smoothie I drank? No. Is it because it was too cold or weird mix? No. So is it because I'm feeling somebody or something else's stuff? The answer was yes. And I was like, okay, here we go, <laughs> right? Because uh, being a highly sensitive person, that's always possible. And being a type four healing type, meaning of the, um, there's four healing types, one, two, three, and four. The four is the highest spiritual responsibility. So sometimes we have to experience certain things so we can figure something out for other people, and that is okay. So I decided, okay, so whose stuff is it, right? It's one of the best questions you can ask if you're a highly sensitive person, whose stuff is it? Um, so I'm going into the being state and I am just vibrating my body and so I could be more accurate in my muscle testing and I got that it was all of humanity. So what? You know, what was going on with all of humanity? Was it physical, mental, emotional, spiritual? Ah, spiritual, okay. What was it? Well, it was a psychic attack. And so what's really interesting is um, as I go into stillness, sometimes the words will pop into my head, like almost like angel speaking. Sorry for the car sounds. It's my husband driving off to car CrossFit. So, <laughs> so it's like, uh, okay, so psychic attack. And, um, you know, I don't think it really matters who did it, what, you know, purpose, blah, blah, blah. I think that you, the, the interesting thing is like if you're highly sensitive and if you're in the space, it's possible that you might have felt it like I did, which is relatively sudden over a number of minutes, um, having the nausea. Now, maybe you would have some other symptom altogether, but hopefully after I did the clearing, that cleared for you as well. Now, after I do the clearing, oftentimes we have to do a reboot and reset of our systems just to get them back on track. And after I did that, I felt tired. And and I don't mean like tired as in like pathologically fatigued, but more like, okay, let me rest, you know, kind of tired. We call that primarily parasympathetic. Parasympathetic is the relaxation mode of your nervous system. Sympathetic is fight or flight. And uh, parasympathetic is relaxation mode. So it was an excessive, if you will, or primarily parasympathetic, and that's like a detox. So I mean, I was in that state, and I ended up, you know, canceling my, um, you know, appointments for that afternoon, and kind of just settling down, and just not really, you know, talking or or speaking or putting a lot of energy out there as I'm sort of recovering from it. Now, some people or some healers even would say, oh, Dr. Karen, you know, uh, you shouldn't, 
you shouldn't have any symptoms or you shouldn't have these problems and you're too sensitive and all that kind of stuff. Well, how many of us have actually heard that growing up? You're too sensitive, you're too sensitive, you're too sensitive, right? <laughs> so, and that could be true, that could be true, okay? That could be true. However, as we go through this Ascension upgrades, those of us that have the soul types that are uh, earth angels or even more so star seeds or like half of my uh, soul is uh, a light being star seed we are the sensitives of the sensitives you know and sometimes there is a role that we have to play or we choose to play I should say uh, based on our soul contract our soul mission um, to experience something human to experience something human um, that may be uncomfortable so I would say to people that are, and I, and I used to be one of them, okay? So I would say to people who are in the belief that if you are a healer or if you are well, okay, and balanced and healthy, that you should never feel anything wrong. They should never get sick. You should never feel unwell, never have pain, never have anger, never, have, whatever, right? And I'm like, you know... We're incarnated here as human beings. Human beings have these sorts of things happen. So for me as a spiritual teacher, I personally believe it's less about not having those things and never having those things. And, you know, there's some sort of ego involved in that. Like, oh, I'm so great and I never have these symptoms. I never get sick. And, you know, that kind of ego kind of energy versus that human experience where you go, oh, wow, okay, this is what it feels like to be in pain, right? Or this is what it feels like to be in nausea. And then that means other, you can actually then be compassionate. And that is one of my soul experience templates. One, uh, one of them is compassion. So I get to sometimes experience things that other humans experience to remind me of that compassion piece. So I don't judge it as bad. You know, I don't judge my symptoms or having temporary symptoms as bad. What I do do, though, is quickly um, check my reaction if there is one and what my thoughts are around anything that's happening. Because you have a choice. You have a choice to go, oh, my God, not this again. Or, oh, my God, what's going on now? Or, oh, am I sick? Or, I got COVID. Or, you know, those kinds of thoughts, right? Or you can go... Oh, not comfortable, interesting, curious. I'm having a human moment. <laughs> okay, so what what can I do? Do I just, you know, do I just be? Is there something that I'm supposed to do for the highest good? Is you know, so you can be in a place of curiosity and not in that space of chaos, right? Curiosity trumps chaos. So, we would like to be in a space of curiosity, and I believe that that separates the masters from the will be soon masters <laughs> instead of saying beginners we'll say will be soon masters right so a master doesn't go oh, i'm never sick and, and and judge another person for being sick or having a symptom a master goes oh you're having a human moment yeah i have those too you know um and that's okay and uh the thing is is that you know, what we judge or blame or shame or any of that stuff are the lower vibrations. And that prevents us from being that vib beautiful vibration of, of God's source uh, in the world. So you can literally be having a symptom and be vibrating at God's source. I know that sounds, that sounds like opposite, right? That sounds like, well, if I'm vibrating perfectly at God's source, I should, I should feel perfect and I should always feel perfect. And you know what? <laughs> You're human. You have a human body. It's not always going to be like that. Now, you don't have to believe me. You just have to decide for yourself what beliefs serve you and um, what gets you to the next stage of your spiritual evolution. So if you resonate with me, great. If you don't resonate with me, great. It doesn't really matter. I think it's whatever serves you individually. And speaking of individually, let's go to why this, you know, what, what does the psychic attack tell us? Um, all of humanity. Well, all of humanity is like an organism in and of itself and we are part of the one. And so Source wanted me to communicate to you that Whatever we do to ourselves, we do it to another. Whatever we do to another, we do to ourselves. So there's a lot of things in the news right now that are really um, stressful for people that are um, interfering sometimes with our peace. 
and very easy to judge. Absolutely very easy to judge. Uh, whether it be, you know, um, understanding that if there is some sort of you know, genetic material in vaccines, they get injected into, into your cells to make you immune to COVID. Those are patented genes. So therefore, does that mean you are owned and patented by whoever it is that has a gene? Because current laws say that if you have that, you know, if you have some sort of patented thing, then that company owns you. Well, I mean, not as a person, but that, that could apply two people, right? So there, there's that stress about that. Oh my gosh, if there are mandatory vaccines and I don't want a vaccine, I get, you know, this other DNA or, or genetic material in me and, and I don't want to be some sort of hybrid. Uh, you know, I don't want to be somebody else's, you know, owned by somebody else, you know, all, all those concerns, right? Totally understand why people would freak out or start being judged. Or, or judging others, right? Totally get that, totally get that. Or maybe you saw the video of, of the, the gal who talked to, you know, a nurse in, in Stockholm, Sweden, saying that they're not giving oxygen to patients coming in with 5G EMF sensitivity symptoms. They're having shortness of breath, which of course many people know that the gigahertz for the 5G resonates uh, so that the oxygen uh, molecules, um, they, basically you can't oxygenate as well. Is that everybody? Not necessarily, not necessarily. So. Um, can we transform and transmute some of that? I believe we can. I believe we can. But I do feel sad and, and that this is happening, if it is indeed happening, to us as a whole, right? So we can't really, on one hand we are individuated, but on another hand we cannot separate ourselves from what's going on over there or over here, over there. We have to make our, our, our discernments um, and we have to... Um, remember that if we hate something, okay, that is like hating another part of us. So how can we love something, not prefer it, okay, but how do we love something so that it transmutes and shifts and changes? So that is really the challenge here. How do we see whatever comes out of the news, left, right, blue, black, red, center, up, down, whatever, okay, whatever comes out, how can we take the information, distill it, decide for ourselves what resonates, what doesn't resonate, and decide is it something that is my job to take action on, um, physically action, some sort of physical action on, or uh, is that something that I get to vibrate the frequency of love on because that's my role. And there may, may be somebody else that that is their sole mission to take physical action on X, Y, Z. You know what I mean? So in Topican Healing, we do a lot of different, uh, it's based on light, it's based on frequency. And so with your ability to focus your attention and be fully embodied, get that vibration going in your body and feeling that, you actually have a tremendous amount of power to shift things, including your own DNA. So don't think that you don't have the power to change something. Even if something happens that you don't want, you do have the power. But I would say train, learn, you know, learn your power, train your power, see what resonates with you and uh, change the channel. Your, you can, your vibe can actually um, shift uh, frequencies coming in. But you can't be in a place of fear, unfortunately, in order to do that. You have to be in the place of love and oneness. And that's my message to you this month this month this week this week this week <laughs> this month and this week this year um yeah so this week that's so that's it for this week's spiritual medicine digest i encourage you to everything that you look at um you know filter that through love filter that through your oneness understand that we are all one and there's just it's just a different perspective that's playing out in humanity right now and um you know, if everything was peachy keen and perfect all the time, 24 seven, why are we incarnated, right? We wouldn't experience anything, we wouldn't evolve. So sometimes there are things that do need to happen in order for us to evolve. So um, just, just be careful uh, about the judgments and the blaming and the shaming and that kind of stuff. And it's okay if you wanna, you know, like I do, you know, share certain perspectives on Facebook, but please honor other people's perspective and, and don't, you know, argue. Um, 
my advice. I know you don't argue. <laughs> All right. So announcements, Monday's Light War Radio Show. I will have Wendy Coulter on the show, and she is a specialist in medical intuition. She actually trains healthcare professionals, cool, cool, uh, to be medical intuitives. So she will uh, teach us uh, what's involved in medical intuition, how that differs from energy healing, and how you can learn to be a medical intuitive as well if you so choose. Yeah, really cool stuff. Uh, the other announcement I had is that I definitely want you to mark your calendars if you have not already September 10th 2020 is going to be the book launch for the evolutionary healer book and I am one of 18 people who have a chapter in that book my chapter is called the alternate self syndrome there's going to be some topican healing directives in there uh, that is specific to alternate self syndrome and uh, I can't wait to share that with you in the book and um, I, I got on a creative streak the other day and decided uh, now that there's going to be a summit that's also uh, along the book. So we're going to be emailing you details on that on Tuesday, uh, the 11th of August. So check out your email Tuesday with details related to the summit because the summit's going to be free. Um, I've donated a number of freebies there um, and even if you do already have some of my freebies, my colleagues, the other 17 colleagues, have their freebies as well. So you are going to get like mega freebies um, when you opt into the summit, when you know, when you watch the summit, if you happen to love what you're seeing or, or make sure you don't want to miss anything, you can buy an all access pass or very, very low price at the beginning of the summit. And then you would have even additional freebies and gifts from us, which is super cool. Uh, and then I decided in my creative streak the other day that I was going to give away yet another <laughs> couple of freebies so I'm not gonna give you give it away yet until it gets closer to September the 10th but I would really love your support for the book September 10th because what happens is if everybody buys the book on September 10th then you know the book gets ranked higher on the Amazon book list however that stuff works okay I'm just kind of learning the stuff and so um, it gets ranked higher and then if we have a, get a certain ranking then we get into what they call the bestseller list if we get the bestseller list then more people would be able to see the book on Amazon when they're searching for other things and when that happens then they'll be able to take advantage of the wisdom that's in the book so we want to have a bestseller in order for us to spread our magic in order for us to heal the world because we the world needs it okay like let's all agree on that piece right the world could use some healing um, and so there's so, so much juicy amazing stuff in that book I would love your support so if you can buy the book on September 10th tell your friends to buy the book too um, that would be awesome that would be awesome okay so until next week uh, have a wonderful week stay in love stay in oneness stay in vibration and I will talk to you next week